All right, guys, so today we'll discuss on balance volume indicator, which I use from time to time. I generally tend to use just the divergence. So it's given some clear good signals like this entry over here or uh, another entry over here as well to the upside. So this is on the Netflix stock. So even if you go shorter time frame, I don't recommend going shorter time frame, but if you do want to create shorter time frame, uh, it's created some good signals there as well. But there's always be uh, fall signals in the shorter time frame. So refrain from doing much in the shorter time frame. So here uh, it's created some good signals, but I'm pretty sure there are some fall signals as well. Like for example here, uh, this is a simple example of a fall signal. So uh, this is a really good indicator because it is a leading indicator. So you can actually use it as compared to uh, RSI or all those other indicators, which is generally um, a laggard volume. On the other hand, it communicates to you the real transactions of big players and big institutional funds. So uh, they play a big deal. And those divergences, for example, uh, you're having a new high in the price, but then the volume is not correlating to that, then that's not a good sign. So divergence on the on balance volume always uh, gives you pretty decent signal. So um, in order to get out of these four signals, it's very good you combine it with one of some of our strategies. Uh, I like the RSI strategy uh, because it takes volatility into account, but you can also do the breakout or the Bollinger Band because uh, we have a strict stop loss and take profit of threes to one or fours to one, somewhere in that range. You can always change those numbers, uh, but always combine it with both these uh, things both the laggard and the leading indicator and with strict risk management rules so before we discuss the code of it um, the code is entirely available uh, in the description box and the link as always but we'll discuss the code so you know thoroughly what's going on and also we'll also break down what on balance volume is because if you don't understand the theory behind why this on balance volume works and how the on balance volume works then uh, you probably won't be able to uh, trade it strategically and it's very imperative you understand it we'll also discuss the strength and the weakness of it as well so you know when to apply it and when not to apply it and how to solve some of the weakness issues with this indicator so make sure you watch it from the beginning till the end so that you benefit it fully so uh what is on balance volume so on balance volume is just like the normal volume indicator but normally volume is like on a daily space so on balance volume is like cumulatively, it kind of adds up to the volume of the previous day. Uh, so I'm gonna break it down in simple terms. You understand really the crux of it. So let's say day one, the market closes 5% and the volume is 100,000. So after day one, the on balance volume becomes zero plus 100,000. Now the reason is plus 100,000 is because we've got a positive close. We've got plus 5%. So day two, again, we've got plus 2%, which is again a positive close, remember. And we check the volume, and as you can see, the volume here is 80,000. So now we're gonna add 80 to the 100,000 to become 180,000. Now let's see day three. Again, we've got plus 1%, which is also a positive close. So then you check the volume and it's 20,000. So we add the 20,000 to the 180,000 and we get 200,000. So now let's see day four. So day four, we've got a negative day. So it's minus 1%. So the volume, when we check, is 30,000. So this time, because it's a negative close, what we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract the on balance volume of the previous day. So from 200,000, we're gonna subtract the 30,000 to get 170,000. So I hope you got the gist of how a positive close and a negative close kind of affect the whole scenario. Now let's take the case of day five. So day five, again, you've got a negative close, negative 1%. We check the volume and the volume is 100,000. So again, we subtract 100,000 from 170,000 to get 70,000. Now, how to execute this for retail traders? So, um, the thing is that majority of these big players, they can't hide the volume. So when they come in and hit the market, as compared to a retail trader, retail trader is normally one contract, two contracts, 10 contracts, 100 contracts. 
um, it, it's not significant enough. On the other hand, the volume is significant for the institutional traders. You, they can't hide it. So they might be trying to unload their contracts on a daily basis, like maybe like 10,000 contracts per day, but that will be reflected on the volume, which however might not be reflected on the price. So you might see certain uh, one whole week of consolidation, but these kind of games are being being played. There are people trying to unload their positions, trying to accumulate the positions um, so that the market goes, so that they're positioning themselves for the market to go up. So for the retail traders, you need to keep track of all these numbers, of these on balance volume, and kind of get an idea on where the market is heading. Um, so by calculating the divergence, you can kind of figure out where the market is kind of headed or in other words where this down move or what this up move was significant enough so you can kind of predict the reversals pretty much so if you can see on day one after day when we had hundred thousand volume and we didn't actually go down much because we had day one of five percent day two positive two percent day three one percent and day four and day five was just a small decline of one percent but still the on balance volume was significantly lower from hundred thousand all the way to 70,000. So I would look at it and go, hey, you know what? The market has gone up significantly. It's gone down past two days, but there has been lots of unloading. There's been lots of volume being transacted. So what should I do with this? Is this, is this down move of minus 1% significant? Yeah, because there were 100,000 contracts being traded and it's more than what we started from day one. From day one, it was 100,000. And in day five, we are now at 70,000. There's been lots of unloading of transactions going on. So this is significant enough and maybe there could be a reversal. Just gonna go to the on balance volume here and just go, um, forget the signals for now. Uh, just check out this on balance volume uh, divergence indicator. So th these are actual on balance values. So you can see we made a new high here. Um, the on balance volume has also created a new high. But the next few days, the market has went on to create another new high on 15th of November, but you can see the volume is not significant up. And again, the market has created a new high. Still, the on balance volume hasn't beaten the high of 27th of October. So this, these are all significant information. These are all signs that, hey, maybe this up mode is slightly kind of fading away. Are these institutional traders slowly starting to lose their aggression? Should there be more aggression on the up move? So these are all questions that you can ask yourself, but you always need a trigger. You always need uh, some sort of strategy, a backtest strategy that works. You need to have proper risk management tools and all those things to combine this information. This is just an information, this is just an indicator, but you need to combine all these things uh, to get better results. So now let's see how we code this strategy. So we've done an RSI divergence indicator, which is really cool, uh, which if you guys haven't downloaded the code, feel free to go for it. It's the RSI divergence spine script code. It's really cool strategy. It gives out RSI divergence indicator. Um, and again, you can use that for your other strategies when you're combining with it. So this code is similar to that. So I'm gonna break it down to you so you guys understand. So I'm not gonna write down the code as usual because um, it's kind of lengthy. So um, I will kind of explain it to you, break it down to you so uh, you guys understand it better. So, uh, so pivot right and pivot left, we'll come to that discussion later on, but maximum range and minimum range is to see how far the, the divergence should be checked. So we don't want the divergence to keep on being checked for like, 100 years obviously 100 years is not gonna happen in 10 years or something so we don't have lots of lines scattered around we just need to have a minimum range and maximum range so i'm just going to give 50 periods and the maximum range to be uh, 50 periods and minimum range to be five periods so what it's going to do is it's basically going to check for divergences uh, between five and 50. so there has to be at least five periods that have passed and going to be 50 periods maximum to find out where there is a divergence so if you type in obv the pine script will give you all the data of on balance volume so you don't have to calculate what an on balance volume is so if i just do command and click yeah so if you just plot obv uh, you basically get it's a built-in variable uh, you'll get the on balance volume chart so what i'm going to do is i'm going to type in obv and i'm going to store this to obv value so we can make changes to it 
uh, not changes to it, we can use that value and figure out where the divergence is and plot the things as well. So first we need to calculate if we have a pivot low. So pivot low is basically when the market creates a new low. So we need to check it for the OBV. We also have to check it uh, for the price as well. So, so the first one is to check the pivot low in the past five days. So here you can see that we have done the pivot low and pivot left and pivot right. So that's what we've done the five periods and the left and the five periods and the right. And then we have checked the number of bars. So this function will return a true or false. So we've actually created the minimum range and the maximum range which is again the 50 and the five. So we're gonna check out when the last time that condition was true. And then we check the on balance volume is higher or low check. So this is when we are checking for the divergences is the price and is the on balance volume creating a similar higher high or higher low or vice versa. So this is only for the buy signal. For the sell signal, you guys have to do just the opposite side of it. Um, so this is for the lower low. Again, we're checking the pivot right and pivot left and then we're using the value when. So value when will basically return the source value when the condition was true. So the first uh, thing that we input is the condition and the occurrence is the one and then the source will be returned. So uh, we'll get the return of the value when and then we'll check it and then we'll get the price LL check as well. So then we've got the bull condition. So we check if this is true and then this is true and the pivot low is true. Then we have got a bull condition. So once we've got a bull condition or so a buy condition, we basically have to convey the information to the Pine script to give the indicator signal to give buy. So the next few lines of code is just basically plotting the line. So um, I'm not going to go deep into it. It's just basically a color of it and then the shape of it and the line and all those things. So we've used the ternary conditional operator as well, which is the question mark. Um, again, if you guys want more explanation to detail of it, just clicking on it and then I think it should pop up normally it does but just go to the pine script manual section and just click on ternary conditional operator and you'll get an idea we've used it a few times in some of our codes in our strategy and you'll get an idea you can go deep into all these things so um, other than the value when or the ternary conditional operator we haven't used uh, we've used a function here as well we created a function which returns true and false as well so other than all these things we haven't done much of code so there you go that's pretty much it that's the strategy now let's go into the strength of this strategy before we discuss the weakness of it so the strength of the strategy is really in identifying uh divergences so uh, the market is creating a lower low but the on balance volume is not creating a lower low so it's kind of confirming to you that the volume is telling you that the downturn is not significant uh, and it's more retail traders who are executing these orders, which means that there, is, there can be a push to the upside. So in longer time frame, like a daily chart, it can be perfect. So for example, here, I've got another buy signal and the market has gone up. A um, couple of buy signals here. The market didn't rapidly go up, but it still went into kind of like a consolidation and then went up possibly because of bad earnings report as well. This is where we need to bring in some confluence. So if you do like, you know, a proper risk management specifications, then I think um, this confluence kind of thing becomes ideal. But if you don't apply those risk management techniques, then uh, it could be critical. So these are the earnings that you see and they are significant, but somebody's accumulating the prices instead of market going down. So it's a very simple example of how uh, institutional traders kind of manipulate the market, but us retail traders can have an edge by just looking at the on balance volume. So just like the strengths, we are also gonna have some weaknesses as well. So um, one of the major weaknesses we discuss is the false signals. So one way to avoid the false signals uh, is by making sure that you you trade in a longer time frame like possibly in a daily time frame or even a four hour chart but the moment you start going into one hour or five minutes or 15 minutes it's kind of in a uh, in a very dangerous place to be so this is um, one of the ways you can correct it is by using that pivot right and pivot left so you see here we've got a buy signal and it didn't create much big of an up move on the upside so that is where our pivot right and pivot left comes into play so when I change, so what pivot right does is that it waits for like five bars before the signal comes out. So if I actually zoom into this, 
um, it will wait for one, two, three, four, five before you get the signal. So the reason why it's waiting is that it wants to confirm that within that five bars, there is no new on balance volume low. So at the end of the day, we're kind of trading divergences here. So we are trying to see that on balance volume low is a higher low as compared to the price. And that's what's giving us a signal. Uh, so by waiting five bars, we kind of confirm that, hey, um, let's see how it goes for the next five bars. If it doesn't create a new low, then it's OK. Let's give out the signal. So we can actually change this pivot right and pivot left to 10. So in that way, uh, we're delaying the signal and hence making sure the confirmation is much more um, positive, much more concrete. So in this case, remember, we had this fall signal here. The market didn't tend to go up. So if I actually now um, save this, what you will see is that that fall signal will disappear. So you can see that fall signal has completely disappeared. And now we've got a really new fresh signal, which has worked out to the upside. So. So it's kind of like a trade off. So if you want like more positive signals and less false signals, then you might want to give out more of a pivot right and pivot left, i.e. more of a delay of the confirmation or um, you have to create a risk management technique. On the other hand, the trade off being you can reduce this to from 10 to 5, but that will mean more false signals as well. So it's it's really a personal thing for people who have done our course. Uh, you guys know how to optimize these values when you back test it, but uh, generally I like to keep it somewhere between three to ten. I don't want to give away my number because I've optimized it personally for my own. I can I can even optimize the maximum range and minimum ranges as well. So people who have done our course, you can you can always send me an email if you got any confusion with regards to the codes, uh, or if you want something similar for some other indicator like an MACD or a stochastic or something. Uh, just let me know where your confusion in the code is and I'll, I'll be more than happy to help you. So for people who have not done our course, put a comment on our YouTube and I will generally have a look if I have time. Um, the code is pretty simple. When you break it down, you will get to know what it's all about. Uh, but at the end of the day, these indicators are all good, but it all comes in confluence with our backtesting strategies because we are quantitative traders. These are all just edges in our in our books, we are just trying to find the best results for our trading strategies. And these kind of uh, indicators, especially leading indicators like on balance volume, gives us a tiny bit of hope because we're kind of going in deeper to the big hedge funds and the institutional uh, investors to find out where they are putting their shoes in and where they are going in with these trades. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Feel free to ask any questions. Have a great day.